So I'm Rob Mungovern. I'm a conservation officer at the Wild Trout Trust. We find ourselves on the banks of the River Mel. And today's been a really important day. We've undertaken the second phase of wild brown trout translocation here to the Upper Mel. My name is uh, Dr. Ian Hurst. I work for the Environment Agency and I am the team leader for the local fisheries biodiversity and geomorphology team. I've been involved with the River Mel Restoration Group for since the beginning, so almost 20 years. You know, being riparian owners, they see the river every day and they, they can see the impacts of any intervention. I'm Stephen Hawkins. I've been chairman of the River Mel Group since its inception in the early 2000s. When we first started, the water flow level was amazingly low. The main problem was that the river at that stage was over wide for the flow running through it. The amount of water that's been taken out of the aquifer is a distinct problem. So the River Mel has suffered from habitat degradation. Firstly, it's been suffering from reduced flow. The aquifer here is abstracted for public water supply. So all of our needs result in less water here in the River Mel. We've also got increased recreational pressure and that includes dogs. We've had dogs enjoying the river, but also walking over to some of the spawning areas in the winter. So disturbing those eggs that are laid in the clean gravel. What we do get is a lot of people walking up and down, just saying how nice it is to be with the river. It's always a balance between people and nature. Many of the rivers have been created by man and nurtured by man in the last hundred years. And if we allow areas to become completely scrubbed up and enclosed by tree canopies, we lose that marginal vegetation, which is really important for a whole range of invertebrates, for all for our water voles, and for narrowing the stream naturally and holding the banks together. So we had silt input, we had shading, we had less flow. That stopped the fish getting to some of their clean spawning areas. So we had to introduce new gravels. We've put something of more than 200 tonnes of gravel back. And so we created the habitat and it's just fantastic. We've been able to reintroduce some of those wild brown trout back here into the upper river mill. What we have realised is, you know, we've done habitat improvements um, upstream of a barrier and the fishery isn't as good as it could be. Um, so Rob from the Wild Trout Trust came to us last year with a proposal to actually sort of translocate fish. There's an impassable barrier halfway along the River Mel between Melbourne and Meldruff. It's a historic mill structure so we've not been able to make any changes to it. We've spent several years restoring the upper parts of the River Mel. We've got some great quality brown trout habitat, but sadly our brown trout are missing. What my team has done is facilitate the capture of the fish. And to do that, we use um, a technique called electric fishing, uh, where in this case, we use a battery powered electrode which creates an electric field in the, in the water and it, and it temporarily stuns fish. Uh, we quickly scoop them up, um, put them into a tank of clean, cool water, and then, then we assess the fish. So we, we identify the species, size range, and then decide which uh, fish we're going to move upstream. Moving fish from one river to another does require a permit under fisheries legislation and that's to protect the ecology of the river and it's also to protect rivers from introduced fish that have come from elsewhere in the country and they can carry diseases, parasites, bacteria, viruses but they could be the wrong genetic strain for that river. We collected mainly juvenile fish but there were a few adult fish in there and I was able to find one of the trout spawning areas, the reds, so we knew that some of those trout would manage to find each other. They actually spawned in a second location later on into January, so that's given us 
the confidence that some of those trout that we've moved have first of all survived in the river, secondly they've managed to come together and thirdly they found suitable spawning areas. So we've given that population another boost to help seed that strong population here into the upper river mill and hopefully they'll be able to reproduce again and take forward a viable, sustainable wild brown trout population. For me, what makes today so good is the fact that we're working in partnership with a local group, uh, with the Wild Trout Trust, the Environment Agency. Um, you know, we've been working together for 20 years. Uh, it's a long time. So one of the main strengths that Wild Trout Trust can offer to river conservation groups, private landowners and fisheries is giving you that on the bank practical advice. So we can undertake walkovers and produce a written report. That's provided through our advisory visit service, which is funded through the rod license sales. And we get a proportion of that back from the Environment Agency to actually help you conserve your local river. That might then lead on to a practical visit. We actually work with community groups, fisheries owners, landowners to put some of those features back in. That might mean pinning some fallen woody structure at the margins for increased cover. It might mean introducing some of that gravel to increase spawning areas. We need to take a holistic approach and make sure all of those elements come together for the conservation of our wild brown trout.